Hi, welcome to this really quick Alchemist chemistry practical video recapping the displacement reactions of the halogens with solutions of halide ions. So what I've got here is colourless solutions of potassium chloride, potassium bromide and potassium iodide. To each of those boiling tubes I'm going to add some aqueous chlorine water, uh, which is chlorine dissolved in water, dilute chlorine in other words, and I'm looking for any observations of colour changes which are indicative of a displacement reaction taking place, which might help me to discover how reactive chlorine is. So what I'm going to do now is add chlorine water to each of these boiling tubes, bung them so that the fumes of chlorine don't escape, it's not a particularly nice smell, and then look at for any colour changes in these experiments. Okay, so what we have here is the aftermath once I've added the chlorine water to the three solutions. I brought the chlorine water with me sealed, so you can see its original colour is effectively colourless, and you can see upon the addition of chlorine water to potassium chloride, it doesn't appear like anything's happened. That's because chlorine is as reactive as itself within the chloride solution. Um, nothing's going to happen there. There's no displacement reaction. On the other hand, when I added the, the chlorine water to potassium bromide, it, it went from being colourless to being this yellow colour. That's indicative of a displacement reaction. The more reactive chlorine has displaced bromine into solution from the potassium bromide, and the reason why the solution now appears to be yellow is because there is bromine dissolved in the water and dilute, dilute sorry, bromine has a yellow to orange appearance. On the far right hand side, I added chlorine water to potassium iodide. And again, we can see a sort of brown color, a reddish brown color has appeared. That again is indicative of a displacement reaction. The more reactive chlorine has displaced out iodine from the potassium iodide solution because chlorine is more reactive than iodine. And now we have molecular iodine, I2, dissolved in the water. And dilute iodine has a brown appearance. So here we have a summary of the reaction taking place. The chlorine, Cl2, is reacting with the potassium bromide, KBr, displacing out the yellow-orange bromine molecules and forming potassium chloride in the process. So the balanced equation is 2KBr plus Cl2, forming 2KCl and Br2, the molecules of bromine on the right-hand side. Effectively, what's going on is illustrated by the ionic equation below. You can see that the bromide ions are being oxidized. They are losing electrons to form bromine molecules on the right-hand side, and the chlorine molecules are being reduced. They, the chlorine atoms are gaining electrons to form chloride ions on the right-hand side of the equation. So the ionic equation reveals the redox reaction taking place in this experiment. I also want to explain the displacement reaction taking place between the chlorine water and the potassium iodide. So here's my balanced equation. We've got two Ki, two potassium iodide, reacting with chlorine, Cl2 molecules. The chlorine is more reactive than the iodine, so it displaces out the iodine from the potassium iodide. So on the right-hand side, we have our new product, potassium chloride and iodine molecules, which have been displaced out, and the balancing requires a two in front of the KCl. So the overall equation is two Ki plus Cl2, forming 2KCl and I2 molecules. Again, explain the redox of the reaction, the oxidation reduction. We have iodide ions being converted to iodine molecules. So that is an example of an oxidation because the iodide ions are losing electrons to become uncharged iodine atoms in the iodine molecule. Simultaneously, the chlorine atoms in the chlorine molecules are being reduced. They are gaining electrons, becoming negatively charged chloride ions in the process. Okay, so this time I'm going to investigate dilute bromine, bromine water, interacting with the three solutions. So let's have, again, a boiling tube with potassium chloride, which is a colourless solution containing chloride ions, potassium bromide, a colourless solution containing bromide ions, and potassium iodide, a colourless solution containing iodide ions. I'm going to add orange bromine water to each of these boiling tubes, looking for a colour change which will be indicative of a displacement reaction taking place. And again, it will help me understand the reactivity of bromine in comparison to chlorine and the future iodine as well. Right, so here we are after the addition of the bromine water, the aqueous dilute bromine. And I've brought the bottle of bromine water with me to remind you that it is effectively a light yellow color. It can be orange if it's more concentrated and um, yellow if it's more dilute. And you can see 
upon addition of bromine water to potassium chloride, not much has happened. It just looks even more dilute yellow, no displacement reaction, as chlorine is more reactive than bromine. Upon addition of bromine water, potassium bromide, not much has happened. That again is because bromine is as reactive as itself. There's no displacement reaction taking place. It's just a, a more dilute yellow color, no reaction. But upon addition of bromine water to potassium iodide, it appears to have gone a much darker orange approaching brown color. And that again is indicative of the fact that the displacement reaction has taken place. The bromine is more reactive than iodine and therefore it is displacing out iodine from the potassium iodide. You have iodine I2 molecules in solution, building up in solution, and their color is more towards the brown, den brown end of the spectrum, hence why the boiling tube is darkening and moving more towards a brown color and away from the light yellow color of the other two boiling tubes. Just to summarize the reaction taking place, we have potassium iodide reacting with the orange bromine, molecules to form potassium bromide as the iodine is displaced out and iodine molecules in solution creating that browner hue in the solution itself. And the equation, the balanced equation is 2Ki plus Br2 bromine molecules forming on the right hand side of the reaction potassium bromide 2KBr and I2 iodine di uh, diatomic molecules. Again uh, a ionic equation to help emphasize the redox reaction taking place. We can see that the iodide ions are being oxidized from I minus to neutral uncharged atoms in the iodine molecules. And whilst the bromine atoms in the bromine molecules are being reduced from Br2 to 2Br minus, so the iodide ions are being oxidized, the bromine atoms in the bromine molecules are being reduced, gaining electrons. The final stage of the experiment is to prove that iodine is the least reactive of the three halogens investigated. And so to do that, we take again, boiling tubes of potassium chloride, potassium bromide, potassium iodide, our colorless solutions, and we're gonna add iodine water to each of these and look for any color changes. So here are our results after the addition of dilute iodine solution or iodine water to each of those three solutions, potassium chloride, potassium bromide, potassium iodide. I've brought the original iodine water solution with me in its bottle to remind you of its color. This is more orange, but you know, ideally it would be uh, slightly more concentrated and brown in color. In exams, it'd be better if you said it was brown rather than orange. Um, but you can see here that I've added iodine water to potassium chloride, and all it's done is become slightly more dilute because it's being added to a lot of fluid, but effectively nothing's happened. There's no reaction, there's no vibrant color change. It's just staying the same. I've added iodine to potassium bromide and it looks identical with potassium chloride. Nothing's happened. There's no displacement reaction taking place. I've added it to potassium iodide as well and the same color appears. No reaction taking place. It's just becoming slightly more diluted by the presence of quite a lot of water in the boiling tube. So the key thing here is iodine is the least reactive of the halogens. It is not displacing the chlorine from potassium chloride or the bromine from potassium, uh, potassium bromide. It can't displace iodine from potassium iodide because it is identical. So there is no reaction taking place. It is the least reactive of the three halogens we investigated. So your objective is to remember the key colors involved in these experiments and hopefully that to the proof that it brings regarding the trend in the reactivity of the halogens, plus the key balanced equations and redox reactions taking place in these experiments. I hope you found that really helpful and I look forward to speaking to you in the next Alchemist chemistry video. Take care. Bye now.